This is the Expar Taurus. It is a medium battle tank, and I gotta say, this thing was really hard to create. I think you'll like it though. So let's talk about the big problem with battle tanks. As you get heavier, the physics of the universe start to break down. A land vehicle that weighs over about 100,000 kilograms has a real struggle ahead of it to avoid things like randomly falling through the planet or wheels just popping off for no reason. So getting a tank this heavy was a serious challenge, and I'm actually riding the edge of, uh, of how heavy it can be. Just another couple thousand kilograms is enough to push it over the edge into danger zone, at least at one gravity, because all of this is dependent on how much gravity you've got, and this is all natural gravity stuff. Uh, and I've tried a couple of other approaches. Uh, you obviously can use anti-gravity, but that's really cheating. Um, you can use downwards firing thrusters, but they don't help. So, there's a lot of issues. Let me go ahead and talk about how I made this light. The first and most important way to make your ship light is to make the turrets light, and that means that I used this mod, and this is the only mod I used. This is the condensed missiles, and they are fantastic. Uh, they're definitely overpowered, but in this case I needed that. I could not get my tanks to have enough firepower to matter in a normal sized package. I also couldn't connect the turrets up to a, uh, to a central repository of ammunition, so you have to refill these manually through these unusual slots. I also did mostly striped armor rather than full plate armor. This stuff is not going to hold up against a ship missile barrage, but I couldn't do any better uh, and still keep it under weight. In addition, I put some space balls down here and in the front to prevent it from catastrophically failing. Now let's get into the actual function here. There are 12 marine passenger seats and one cockpit. When you get in the cockpit, you can't pilot this tank at all. It just doesn't move. You have to hit 1 to enter into the remote control and then you can pilot the ship. Uh, you can see that all this stuff operates just fine once you take control although that was stuck for a second for some reason that's fine so we have two turrets and they have radically different arcs of fire the front turret cannot turn all the way around whereas the rear turret has full, hundred, full 360 degrees of motion on the other hand the front turret is the only one that can fire directly in front of you the rear turret cannot turn down at all so uh, there you have very very different arcs of fire and you've got to manage your approach a little bit if you're trying to take out a ship or someone above you, that's easy. You can use both turrets. Someone behind you to the sides, that's good. You can use the big turret on the back. Uh, but if you are like head-on jousting with someone, you're only going to get to use the front turret. So this is a tank, not a. Uh, uh, you're not You're not really supposed to to run straight at someone if you can avoid it. So now let's drive it around using WSAD. That works fine, but as I said, there are some serious physics problems, and it is important to take those into account. The first physics problem is that the rotors have a maximum connection strength, and if enough force is applied to the rotors, they will just snap, and the wheels will pop right off. That means that if you're a tank above about 250,000 kilograms, your rotors will randomly fail whenever you hit any sort of bump or dent in the road. Uh, so if you're above 250,000 kilograms, you have um, some problems. We are at 260,000 kilograms. <laughs> well, we'll see how well this works. The other problem is that if you run into a slope, the way that the physics calculates wheel pressure uh, is, is such that if you have a wheel against the slope and wheels driving you forward, you will just drive straight through the slope rather than going up it. So you cannot rely on these upwards facing wheels. They will actually just destroy the land in front of you rather than helping you, you to go up it. Uh, instead, I had to use some space balls to get a little bit of a lift in the front and prevent us from just punching straight through. We're about to go over some uh, slight bumps and let's see whether or not we lose any wheels. Bump. We didn't lose any wheels. Yay! This is at one gravity, of course. If we reduce the gravity, everything becomes a whole lot nicer. If you're at half gravity, then the limit is 500 rather than 250 and so on. Uh, in theory, none of these should have any limits. Let's go up this hill. Wah! In theory, the big advantage of a wheeled vehicle is that it can handle more or less any weight. You don't have to worry about it um, 
sinking through the ground or anything like that. And if you're at 500 gravities, who cares? Because all that pressure just goes straight into the ground. So you don't have to worry about trying to get it to work, uh, you know, to have enough uh, thrust to get off the ground and all that stuff. If it's wheeled, you don't need thrusters. You don't need to worry about what the, thr what the gravity is, except you do because you'll fall through the ground. Uh, voxel terrain is a little bit more forgiving in some ways, but in multiplayer, voxel terrain becomes fatal. Instantly fatal, because the voxel terrain, uh, you'll just your wheels will catch on the inside of a voxel and things will explode. Alright, well let me go ahead and show you what it looks like when you fire this thing. So we've got two cameras, we've got the top camera, and we've got the bottom camera, which is down here. Now when you play on Monday, I do not recommend blowing up the city just for the sake of blowing up the city, but I figured I'd show it to you. These are large ship heavy armor blocks, and uh, with small ship missiles, it takes quite a bit of bludgeoning to actually do very much damage. We certainly can't go up that ramp, there's just no way for us to fit. Let's go back down and fight something that can actually get injured rather than just firing at hard armor that's built specifically to be almost impenetrable. Oh look, up there, I can see some of our ships. Shall we see whether we can hit them from here? Well, we can't hit them with our rear turret because it is not able to point down. We should be able to hit them with our front turret if we can find them. Maybe when we're about to go over this hill, you think? Come on, forward you go. Yeah, I think we'll be able to see him right about now. Yeah, we can see him fine. Ready? Now that tank I'm firing at is a 350,000 kilogram tank, and if I do very much damage to it, uh, as soon as one of its wheels goes down, it will tip, and then as soon as it starts to tip, the very second it starts to tip, it'll just punch through the ground, through the ground and fly away, because um, it is heavy enough to cause the physics problems that I was talking about. Shall we see if we can get it to do that? It's a little bit hard from this range. I'm mostly hitting the armor, because that thing does have armored, armored wheels. Am I too low? I'm too low. Come on. I can't be out of my range, right? Well, let's go over there and look at it in earnest. Bonk! Oh, see, I just did some damage. Shall we see how much damage we took from that? We lost some wheels. Um, yeah, we only lost one wheel, so that's not too bad. It's the, the problem of being uh, a large ship. The good news is we can actually repair that wheel. We don't need to put it on jacks or anything. We can just stick it, on, stick it right back on whenever we feel like it. So this corner here is the tank killer corner. Um, if you go over that in a tank, you are very likely to actually dip one of your wheels down into that little little corner hole and kill yourself. I'll show you. Ooh, that one worked okay for once. It looks like we actually destroyed our front turret. Uh, I'm not getting any response from it at this... Oh, there we are. I was just pointed the wrong way. I'm just being stupid. Oh, look! The tank didn't fall through. I did do a whole bunch of damage to it and it didn't fall through the surface. Uh, I've actually taken this video three times now, and in the past it has always fallen through. That's a damn shame. I wanted to show off the fact that it just randomly falls through the ground. Now I've probably lightened it up enough that it's not going to. You want to see what it looks like when you fire on something that's not a vehicle of destruction? No heavy armor? It looks like that. This is the large tank that I... Uh, um, that I built before. Sorry, the light tank that I built before. It weighs one-tenth as much, uh, one-seventh as much, but I can't hit it from where I am right now because it's out of my radius. So I'll have to pull forward and then move left some. Boom. So these missiles work great against small ships. Uh, large ship armor is a little bit, a little bit problematic. See, large ship armor just holds up way too well.
part of it is that my firing is a little bit a little bit unoptimal, but that's fine. I think I can live with a little bit of unoptimization. So that is the XPAR Taurus, and I really encourage you to test it out, try it out yourself, see whether you like it or not. Uh, you can play it on my servers if, uh, if you come at the right times. Uh, I will be having a server up on Monday. Uh, oh, we are sunk into the ground a little bit. So it's up to you if we want to come by and try, that, try it out then. Uh, the light tank is a little bit more feasible. It doesn't fall through the ground and the wheels don't randomly pop off. But who wants to be a light tank when you can be a medium tank? Later on, I'll probably make a heavy tank that's just a whole bunch of space balls. <laughs>